Bonjour. <laughs> Comment ça va? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Best best wishes. Yeah, you also. Eric, okay. give me your um, give me your thoughts on on 2018. We talked about it uh, before when I tasted from Barrow with you in uh, 2019 spring. But you know, what's your your thought about uh, the wines now and and what happened with the harvest and also more importantly as a winemaker what happened to the wines with the élevage i'm saying this in yeah. a good sense because they show incredibly well the all the 2018s i've tasted yeah you remember you remember what that the 2018 was a not balanced was not balanced condition mm. because uh, after six months of almost seven months of rain between December and July, uh, very the um, the weather was very disturbed. We have storm, we have hail, uh, we have uh, permanent rains from uh, May to be to mid July. Then it was not balanced at the beginning, and after it go very very strictly to heat and uh, mm -hmm. and, and and stress. And uh, not balanced stress uh, because uh, you remember uh, the, the the vineyard was very very full of water, uh, mm -hmm. grew a lot, and uh, he, suddenly in uh, in July uh, it begins uh, extremely hot and dry. Then a lot of vineyards in Bordeaux was shocked by this. Uh, uh stress and uh, it was a uh, a difficult vantage for the viticulture and the great surprise to answer to your question is that the uh, you will see that during the the aging all the wines uh each wines in at uh, its place uh go back to classic style Yeah, it, it go back to it, it, it's, it's just like if the normality come back after the after a good uh, a good aging, and uh, this is uh, particularly uh, visible for all the wine. But perhaps Duarmilon, you will see more than the other. You remember Duarmilon uh, en primeur. I we totally agree sort, with you. We 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 have yeah. a sort of wow effect. Wow, uh, the wines uh, uh, on the in terms of aromas, we 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 thought it could be uh, on the right bank in terms yeah. of uh, aromas. After the mouth was much more classic and go back to pork style, but today even your Milan and all the wines go back to uh, it's not a classic vintage. But yeah. wines go back to more classicism. I agree will, with you. Like it will, and, and it will remain, of course. Because it was, for, for example, it wasn't like 2003 where you had these hot conditions, but the wines are a little bit, you know, um, confiture. And the wines, what I like to say, but even when I tasted them from barrel, I found them still on Bordeaux-like. But the yeah. élevage really helped the wines and gave them a really nice form. You know, they're, exactly. uh, they're nicely formed. So just to go over it one more time, I really find what you say is interesting is that um, you thought that when you made the wines and in En Premier, that you were a little bit worried that the wines wouldn't be very Bordeaux-like. But in the end, after the aging in the cellar in the barrel and after the bottling you see how they're much more classic with which i agree i, I agree the wines are uh, very special intense rich wines but at the same time they remind they remain very bordeaux like i would argue even more so than 2009 so um what do you think that was just really the savoir faire of uh The Bordelais of the of of you understand better now how to deal with 
um, hot harvests? Is it mostly that, or is it really something that's uniquely Bordeaux that, that in the end, you know, the wines remain so Bordeaux-like? What do you think it was? Or was it because I, I think, of the water? I think in, in such a vintage, which is not really representative of Bordeaux, I think that the, the effect of the decision of the philosophy of uh, the, uh, uh, the Howard group was very, very important. Of course, the terroir is uh, it, it always extremely important, but the, the weather in this vintage make a sort of a global effect yeah. too much. And then in such condition, in such vintage, I think that the, uh, the, the experience and the philosophy of a, of a wine grower and, and winemaker was very, very important to be able to keep what is good in Bordeaux and what is not good in Bordeaux in extreme condition. Let's try okay? the wines. We begin with Durmilon, please. Okay. We can have a new one. So the uh, Duhar for me is it's the, the tannins, the intensity, it's really amazing. And I, I clear I think this is the best you ever made. Ever. It could be. I, I you know, I like I also like very much the 16. Yeah. Very nice. Dur Dur Milan is 16 is absolutely fantastic. And uh, and for me, this is the 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 first first grade and with its uh, style, uh, uh, could be could be also at the at the very very top of uh, of, of Dior yeah. Milan. And uh, uh, um, I remember then how a terroir have a you know the the, the gravel in Dior Milan, the plateau the Cabernet Sauvignon is not the same we have at Lafitte. Uh, the, the the gravel in Dior Milan are more dry. We have less clay, and uh, sometimes when vintage are hot and dry like that, it can be more difficult. Uh, and and we see, we saw during this vintage that the Cabernet Sauvignon of Dior Milan was suffering more than the Cabernet Sauvignon of Lafitte, because mm. on the plateau de Lafitte, the plateau de Lafitte supports incredibly the vintage. But in Dior Milan, we saw that uh, we have more stress. We have less uh, production because of the stress. And uh, thanks to the Merlot, we have a real Merlot, a real terroir, Argilo Calcaire, ah, with the okay. Merlot. And with the, the terroir, very cold terroir of Merlot, we kept a very fresh Merlot. There was very interesting you know that we had great Merlot everywhere in Bordeaux in, uh, yes. in 18. Then they did a great, great job in the blend. And uh, that's why today I think we are very pleased with the, with the good freshness. Even if the wine is, uh, is, uh, is hot because of the vintage, we, yeah. kept, we keep a good freshness and uh, finesse in the wines. And it's a, it's a great satisfaction. I agree, and it's it's uh, but it's a very big uh, duhar, and also in structure and tannins. You know, it has the fruit, but then the tannins really hold it together. It's really mm. impressive. So let's try the Kerouac then. Perfect. The Kerouac's a little bit cooler than the duhar. Yeah, you're right. Right away on the nose. How, yes, for how, Carriard, I totally agree. Yeah. How do you how have you been improving it? Have you been 
just being more precise um, in the parcels, like just everything? Yes, yes. This is the, um, you, I said that to you last time, it yeah. begins to, it's, it's begin to be the, the result. We are, we are collecting the fruit of a very, very, very precise job we are doing in the, in the vineyard. And today, after year and year, and particularly for five or five years now, uh, we, we really redesign precisely, very precisely, where finish the Lafitte on the top of the Carruade and where uh, finish the Carruade. Uh, and then it's a very, for us, I show you the map to you last time. For, yes. for, for, for us today, it's very precise. And then it's because of this precision we are uh, practicing in the vineyard during all the year, not only at the harvest, particularly at the end, but uh, it's a job of the complete year. And uh, uh, that's right. Uh, you are feeling now that uh, Caruad, Caruad is more and more in the style of, uh, of our terroir, of Lafitte. And, uh, and uh, of course, it, it will be always a second wine, but, but I think we are, we have today, uh, we, we, are we are finding the good, the good balance between the concentration and the precision. I agree. In the past, in the past with, uh, with less precision in the vineyard, if you want to concentrate the wines, you can increase the uh, rusticity. I and, agree. Uh, you could lose precision because now we are more precise in the vineyard uh, after during the maturation and the vinification, we can have more and more concentration without losing the precision and the... Totally precision. true. I, it's much more refined and much more precise, polished. And I kept on using the word fine tannins. It's really, really um, precise, well done. Then we go to Lafitte with the new bottle, you see? The new bottle and the new label. I saw that. Then Lafitte. Okay, so now Lafitte. Mm. What I like about on the this year, you know, Lafitte, you always get tobacco and black currants. But this year there was also the um, lead pencil, you know, graphite. Yeah, you graphite, get it with the carawai, which is really interesting. Yeah, because normally you get graphite more more at Mouton, but this year it was interesting to see a lot of graphite with Lafitte and carawai, and also graphite. Normally you don't get in hot years, so it really shows how you really fine tune the vineyards with this with this extreme weather and yeah. i think if you taste this 18 in blind testing you never in in a few no. years you never imagine it could be you perhaps you can find but it's not your first idea it can be a 18 and it, it, it show again and again how how our terroir have this capacity to accept all the condition and it's incredible but i think that uh What's the most interesting thing too, is how it remains, you know, very black currants and it blue fruits rather than turning to plums or that more hot vintage character. It's totally cool with even some mineral and stone character. And I really think that that's, that's amazing. But maybe that also was because you had good water in the soil as well, right? Yeah, we, we the, 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 the our our clay in the, the Lafitte terroir is is here to to play like a sponge and uh, and uh, honestly we never we never see uh, serious stress we see only good stress yeah. in this uh, in this vintage 
And uh, the diversity of our terroir is also very interesting because uh, you know the, the Merlot was fantastic in 18, but yeah. we don't use in Lafitte, in this blend of Lafitte, we don't use our classical Merlot from the Plateau de Caruade because uh, if this Plateau de Caruade is a terroir of Cabernet Sauvignon and we lost the balance because yeah. the Merlot was over 15. And then the fantastic classic Merlot of Lafitte go in, in the Caruade. Okay. And we use, we use another Merlot, which is good, but never, usually not always in the blend, but we, we, we were obliged to use another Merlot. And uh, uh, it gives 8.5% uh, of Merlot, which is almost high now for Lafitte. <laughs> It's uh, higher than the average. And, uh, and after that, all, fantastic, all the other fantastic Merlot go in the Caruade. And it makes also the concentration of the Caruade. Because uh, I was uh, during wondering. the vinification, during the vinification we, said, we said to us, OK, this year, the Merlot is inc are incredible. We will use probably 12% in the Lafitte. No, because at the end, the law of Cabernet Sauvignon makes that uh, Merlot was limited to 8% and go in the, in the Caruade. And that it explains the level of the Caruade 18. I understand now. But look at Levon Shield. It, it's rich, but the quality of the tannins, and you don't really see the alcohol. It's still in balance. Absolutely. You remember that in this oh. vintage, it was hard for L'Evangile because it was our uh, first organic year in Bio, yeah. and where we were strongly uh, hit by the mildew. Yeah. We, did, we did also or, or, or only one half harvest with a, uh, a yield of... Uh, uh, 17 or 18 hectoliters per hectare. Then the wine is very rich. And uh, you, you remember that uh, it was very, very close uh, at the imprimeur. And, yes. uh, and uh, it's, um, but the proportion, the proportion of, uh, of, of Cabernet Franc, 20% makes that today the wine is coming back to uh, uh, a classic style. And we are not feeling the alcohol, you're right. No. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great Levangil. It needs an uh, imprimeur to perhaps uh, to more uh, expertise to understand. But today we are very, very confident the wines go back to mm. the great classic style of, uh, of Levangil. All right. That really is classic uh, L'Evangile, where it's where you have the plush, the fleshy, you know, it's, it's gras, but then it has the tannins that keeps it so tight to, and together. And, but the yeah. tannins are so fine as well. No, it's, it's, it's it, I, um, I love very much now this wine. I was sure, I was, uh, uh, I was sure it was a, from the beginning, it, it's a great, uh, a great L'Evangile, but uh, I agree it was a little bit difficult to to, yeah. to understand because of this uh, reduction of uh, you, you know that uh, we are not fan of very very low low yield. It's not it's not a good politic. Uh, yeah. One uh, one vineyard one vineyard in good shape, good safe, good uh, health in Bordeaux must be able to produce uh, uh, around 40 hectoliters per hectare if the management and everything is okay. And this is the good balance to keep the freshness, not too high alcohol to sell. And there we were a little bit surprised by the effect of the concentration. But uh, today, like the other, with the aging, we go back to a very, very, Classic L'Evangile. And, uh, totally. and the, 
the, the Cabernet Franc is, is doing, uh, you know, the Cabernet Franc was, was replanted by Charles uh, uh, between, uh, um, between 2006 and 2013. And, uh, and, uh, and I continue, and now they, are, they continue to work. And, uh, but no, each year, year after year, we are feeling that the, the, the Cabernet Franc are going back in the blend at the great, at great level, even, so even the young vineyard. Okay. Well, listen, Eric, thank you so much for the interview. It was really fascinating, and I enjoyed tasting the wines with you. And I love your comment on how the wines remain so classically Bordeaux. And I agree with you. They certainly do. And um, 18 just made them a little bit even more opulent, more, more Bordeaux. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay, you very much. Hope okay, to see you. I hope to see you uh, at Lafitte in a few months. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay safe. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much.